Hello, you fellow musicians and games out there. This is Quantic Gaming here, and I'm here at part 42 of my Let's Play of Crash Bandicoot the Insane Trilogy, and it's time to get warped. And I mean that literally because we're about to get into Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped, the remastered version. And without further ado, guys, I'm going to start off the new game, and I'm just going to be silent at the moment while this cutscene plays. So here we go, let's start a new game. And I'm looking forward to seeing how this plays out. And I'll give a bit of an explanation as to why I've been absent the past week uh, when, after the cutscenes uh, finish playing out. So I'll be silent when the cutscene starts to play. So whenever it's ready to go. Uka, Uka is free? No, it cannot be. Evil, great evil has come. None have dared fail the great Uka Uka even once. But you, Cortex, you have failed me twice. Great Uka Uka. It was that infernal bandicoot! From deep inside my devil prison, I sent you simple instructions to follow. But you lost the gems, you lost the crystals, and I have lost my patience! There is now no other power source left on this planet! I know we've had a few unfortunate setbacks. And failed! But since your bumbling has managed to set me free, I am feeling generous. There is still a way to amass the power needed to enslave this miserable planet. And this time, this time, the great Uka Uka will make sure that you do it right! After many eons, my evil twin brother, Uka Uka, had been freed from his underground prison. Long ago, I locked him there to protect the world from his malice. Now, free once again, he must be stopped. Children. Uka Uka and Cortex plan to use this time-twisting machine to gather crystals that lay scattered across time. I have brought you here to recover the crystals before they do. To open the time portal, simply stand on a button and then jump into the portal. Good luck. All I can say is that opening cutscene, wow, that is that was amazing. Especially John DiMaggio who voices Uka Uka. Excellent work. You see, he did voice Uka Uka before in Crash of the Titans and Mind Over Mune, but this, this is probably the best work he has done with Uka Uka and the remasters. No, no disrespect to his work in Crash of the Titans and Mind Over Mutant, but John DiMaggio obviously came a long way into doing this. So anyway, here's the warp room, and you probably may have seen this when I did the Kleiner cover of the Crash Bandicoot 3 warp room theme, but this, the warp room looks so beautiful. Now as you can see, I didn't know right, if you take a look right, I don't even get side jump. No, you can't really side jump on top of the bricks you could in the original. But if you look on the the water there, it looks like it looks like it's taking place out in the sea, but it's not really. This looks like an open void space. It really does. I mean, it doesn't look like it's out in the open sea or anything. And as you can see over here, Coco's hacking into the time twister to help crash on his previous adventures. That's how Coco ended up being playable in uh, Crash Bandicoot One and Two because she's hacking into like see Warp Room Two there with a uh, polar in there. See, it's clever as you can do that, but anyway, without further ado, guys, without further chit chat, let's get into the game, shall we? So, we're going to start with the first level, which is Toad Village, and we've got a crystal and we've got a gem, so we're not going to worry about the relics just yet. So, here we go Toad Village. And we'll have a cut, yeah. Crash, crash, crash. Why must you always muck in my mud? Oh, look, I have a mask helping me, too. 
We will find out which one is more powerful soon enough. Well, we will indeed, Cortex. And I like to muck around in your mud because it's fun. All right. So deal with it. <laughs> All right. So Toad Village. Right, so, I, as, as I was saying guys, I wanted to give an explanation as to why I was absent for, or why I hadn't uploaded the video for the past week or so on, oh my god, this, this looks amazing, this level already, I can already tell I'm gonna enjoy this game a lot. Okay, we got our usual controls, spin, crouch, triangle for inventory, so I know all that, so, so this should be very familiar to me, this. Okay, here we go. But the music, all oh, the music is so gorgeous. But anyway, let's talk about my absence, right? You see, I've been quite busy with work and everything like that. Like, you know, as, as per usual. Like, I've always just been busy with work and everything. And, uh, and also, recently I've been fighting a, a cold as well. And I had a bit of a strained voice after my cold was gone. So I'm, I wouldn't say I'm 100% recovered, but I'm recovered enough to do uh, a video, or a few videos, tonight for Crash Bandicoot 3 and the Insane Trilogy. And I always thought it was quite funny as well how the, the toad ended up uh, jumping on the first level portal anyway, so that way that was probably the same toad who I span who who jumped into that portal at the, at the beginning of the, the game there. So anyway, let's go into the bonus stage, shall we? But yeah, my voice became quite strained and I couldn't really record the video because of how low my voice was. But I'm feeling a lot better now to record the video, which is a good thing. Oh, and I've got a trophy already, taking the scenic route, which will be uh, taking the bonus path. So I'm glad I got that trophy already. But oh my god, the music is amazing. Like, you see, I've been I've been looking at some of my friends' videos, uh, like especially 251 GNR, like 251 GNR's videos of Crash Bandicoot 3, and I thought the game looked really good. So I wanted to experience it for myself and see how it was, and it looks amazing already from what I can tell. So we'll see how good it is. We'll see how difficult it is. Because I know that Crash Bandicoot 1 and 2 in this game have not been very generous. In a good way. Not saying that it's bad, that they were quite difficult. I wanted a challenge. I didn't want the remaster to... Uh, can't even get my words right. I didn't want the remaster to... Uh, why can't I not get my words out today? I did not want the remasters to be just as easy as the originals were on PS1. That's what I was meant to say. Don't know why I could not get my words out there for a second. <laughs> Alright, when that night's finished, swinging the sword, we'll get that crystal. So, first crystal collected. So, we're back to collecting crystals once again for the second time. And all in all, I can say this level, like the medieval levels, look amazing. Alright, so that's got the gem and the crystal. So, we'll now get out of this level and we'll head into Under Pressure, which will be the second level. Now, I'm looking forward to seeing that. I know a lot of people were saying, a lot of my friends were saying that the jet ski levels, the Coco's jet ski levels, were pretty bad because the controls were pretty off. But I'll see for myself about that if they're off or not. I know that the controls were really good in the original. So, we'll see if they've uh, replicated them quite well in the... Uh... And we'll let Crash do his dance here, because why not? You know, it's beginning of Crash 3. Great star, Crash. Do your dance. Good stuff. Right, anyway, so let's m move on now to the second level, Under Pressure. Again, we've got another crystal and gem to collect in this level as well. And the fast kick can get you out of sticky situations. Hmm, wonder what st sticky situations there could be in this. Hmm, you never know. Well, I mean, I already know what sticky situations are. Oh, wow. Okay, right, I had seen... Okay, kicked fast is the X and then spin is a square course in this. Just reminding myself of the controls again. The course, you cannot get invincibility in this. Oh, and there's a, there's a bomb that's flashing quite fast, actually. Oh, right. Right, okay, let's just keep kicking. Kicking. Kicking and going, that's all I can say. Right, okay. Get that blowfish out of the way. Oh, no, I like how you actually, they, they actually spin away under the war. Because I remember in the original, when you span away the enemies, it just produced some bubbles. Which wasn't very detailed in my opinion. But then again, though, that was PS1 days, so I don't want to be too harsh about that. And for a moment, I thought I lost my mask, because I thought I heard crashing. Ow! When I when I hit the, uh, the, that eel there. But, wait, I didn't miss any boxes, did I? I'm pretty sure I didn't. No, okay, I didn't. Okay, I don't know what on earth I was thinking there. I thought I missed some boxes for some reason, but I didn't. Okay. And the animation of the uh, the random boxes 
the ones that give the random selection. Well, there's no noise coming from that fan. Well, I suppose in a way that's a good thing because I remember the fan noise kept drowning out the music in the original, so I'm glad they removed that actually. So the fan is, well, pretty mute. I would have expected it to at least have some noise. Okay, right, the uh, controls for the... Uh, further, I've forgotten the name of this vehicle, actually. I know, it shows how much of a crash fan I am for forgetting the name of vehicles. <laughs> See, I'm not using the, the boost just yet because uh, I don't want to take any risks. Maybe once I get rid of the enemies, I'll maybe try to boost out and see how it goes. Scale the box here. Oh wow, again, a lot of lives already in the, in the first warp room, which is pretty good. And I've already got... Oh wow, that boost is really fast. Nice one. Okay, that'll definitely come in handy for the time trials, and as it, as it always has been. Wow, you see... I like what they've done with this level so far in the remastered version because when you go in those tunnels with the electric with the electric panels, it's so atmospheric. Oh damn it, okay right, I accidentally spammed around that bomb there. The bomb was to be fair was pretty close to me, so I had no chance of avoiding that even if I did if, even if I didn't spin there. Oh well no, it's probably just me making excuses, so. So I lost a mask, but big deal. Who cares? I mean I didn't lose a life. In the, in the first warp room, at least that's something. <laughs> okay, let's get these boxes. I think that's all the boxes collected. Yes, it is. Right, okay, and that's the crystal. Right, let's get rid of the shark. And get that gem. Oh, and also, I like how, as well, that when you come off the, uh... Excuse me, when you come off the... The motor board jet ski, or, or underwater jet ski, I'm just going to call it that. I forgot, I actually forgot what the name of that vehicle was in Crash Bandicoot 3 when you use it underwater, but I like how you, when it explodes, you don't have to jump off it and wait for it to explode. Like, Crash will get off immediately. It may look unrealistic, but that's actually a lot more helpful when it'll, it'll come to the time trials. So that's one thing that I'll give the uh, developers credit for. Okay, right, Crash, we're not going to have you dance again. Right, okay, so now it's time to play as Coco in Orient Express. So we'll see how this goes. Now I know that like Pura is uh, available in this for the first time and uh, I know what Pura looks like, I saw from the trailer, so uh, what Pura looks like and Pura looks pretty amazing, if I'm going to be honest. Yeah, you see, there he is right there. There's Pura. Looks pretty cute if you ask me. Oh, you see, that, that that's, that's really cute, that. <laughs> Alright. Okay, I'm not going to hold the uh, circle to run fast or anything. Not yet, anyway. Until I get to the time trials later on. Let's get that life. And now I can run through the barrels like that. Just like in the original. So I'm glad that they kept that in there. Just hoping I don't miss any boxes the first time around when I do this. Oh, the China level looks brilliant as well. It really does. Gameplay so far, the controls are pretty smooth if you ask me. I think, uh, should I use analog? Yeah, I'm probably best spare doing that because I always used that. Actually, no. I'll, just... I'll probably just use the uh, the directional buttons right now because I'm not having that much trouble with the uh, directional buttons when playing this level so far. So, I'll stick with the directional pad. It was really Hogwild was where I had to use the, the, the analog stick. But so far, this is pretty smooth in terms of its controls. I quite like it so far. Okay then, right, so there we are. That's another life collected. Oh, I actually thought I was gonna- oh, nah, need to die. Missed the box. Fall down, there we go. Missed the box. Doesn't matter though, got plenty of life to spare. Imagine if I get a game over on this level trying to collect that one box. That would be quite the thing, wouldn't it? <laughs> it would be quite the thing, indeed. Alright, let's jump over him, right. Alright, there we go, that's it, yeah. Just didn't move to the left enough to get that box. That's what the problem was. But that's all the boxes collected, and now let's just give a little run up to the finish. Alright, nice one. Oh, like Coco, uh, oh, you see, that's, that's really cute, that. Alright, that's the gem collected, and now let's get your back into the time twister machine. Or back into the warp room, should I say. Not the, well, it's, it technically it's a time twister, but... I still call it the warp room for some reason. It really, it technically is called the time twister machine. Is where you are. 
so so far this is going really well. I think what I might do in this uh, uh, part, I was about to say this first part, but part 42 is I'll uh, do uh, Warp Room 1 in this part. And Coco just hacks her computer to turn the uh, I'll let her do her dance. This is her first time uh, playing as her. Yeah, very good indeed. Well done, Coco. Right, now it's time to play as Crash again. And let's go into Boneyard. It's just the first prehistoric level in this one. John DiMaggio strikes back once again as Tiny. You see, in my opinion, John DiMaggio was the best voice actor for Tiny. Definitely, hands down. I mean, Brendan O'Brien was okay as Tiny, but John DiMaggio definitely captures that that personality of Tiny from my point of view. And I like how he says, Crash got crushed! And he does it right at the camera as well. I thought that was kind of creepy the first time I saw that, actually. Alright, so now, prehistoric level. Now, there's two gems you can collect in this. The box gem, which we will get in this, but the second gem we will not be able to collect yet because we don't have the uh, red gem yet. Okay. Well, the Triceratops in this looks pretty good, if you ask me. He doesn't look very threatening, actually. Like he did in the last game. Oh, well, now that I said that, he's angry. He's like, you come in non-threatening, you're going to pay for that now. Oh, god damn it. Right, okay. <laughs> now, I do know uh, that I can uh, just leave the boxes and let the Triceratops collect them, but do you know what? I need the one before in the live, so I'm not going to do that in a moment. See, look at him. He looks pretty, he looks pretty good, if you ask me. He doesn't look very threatening, actually. I have to say, in the original, he looked a lot more threatening, the Triceratops, when they chased you down. So, so far, this is going quite well, in terms of the... Uh, in terms of the controls and everything, this is going very smooth, actually. With the exception of uh, maybe the, I'd say, the one with the most heavy controls, I'd say at the moment would probably be the underwater levels. See right there, we don't have the red gem yet, but we can get that from a later level, which I will show you what that is if you don't know anything about Crash Bandicoot 3. If you're a new viewer, um, I won't spoil it for you, but for those who do know, you'll know already. So anyway, let's carry on. Let's get rid of that. And uh, those enemies, those enemies in the under, um, in the mud there, in the swamp water, they look a lot creepier, actually, and... Huh. I actually thought there was a life there when you spanned that box in the original, but maybe that's just my imagination. I actually thought there was a life there behind that nitro. Right then, let's go on the, the bonus round. Okay. Crash out always has to be perfectly precise, doesn't he? He always has to land right in the middle of the platform. But yeah, the prehistoric levels. Wow. That's all I can say. They're, they look pretty good, if you ask me. They look amazing so far. That's probably my favourite level design, actually. Probably my, my favourite remaster design, to, well, uh, so far. Right, let's go up here, get that life and the Wimper Fruit. And let's just use the body slam to collect the rest of them, because why not? We're not going to have the regular... Uh, oh, actually, no, it's probably a bit of a spoiler, actually. I'm not going to say no more than that. But for, for those who do know it, then you'll obviously know what, what I'm talking about. I'm not, I'm not going to say no more than that. So as we leave this bonus round, we'll go back to the dark swampy pits that is Boneyard. Oh damn, okay right, yeah I know he ran right into that enemy there without spinning him in time, but luckily I managed to get him. And the effectiveness of the crystal light, once again. I know, I don't know what I just said there, the, the, the brightness of the crystal light once again. But the lava looks so good. Looks very realistic if you ask me, like, I mean, maybe like... This may be cartoon-esque, but the lava, if you ask me, looks pretty damn good in, in, in this uh, game, if you ask me. Alright, let's go. Another Triceratops chase, and this one's probably going to be even madder, because uh, I called him non-threatening again. He's probably, like, his, a, probably his friend there, like, that, that chased me down, was like, Hey, he called me non-threatening. Get him. My pleasure. Alright, he'll get that box for me, yeah. Might as well let him get that box for me. Oh, damn it! Oh, god damn it! How, did I, how on earth did I forget there were nitro boxes there? That was pretty damn silly me. Oh, god damn it! No! Oh, jeez. Okay, right. Oh, you know he got me. Still non threatening. Yeah, yeah, you're still non threatening. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Right, okay, that was close. I nearly lost a life there to that Triceratops. That was pretty silly me. I actually forgot that there were nitro boxes there. 
how on earth could I forget that? I know shows you how much of a Crash fan I am. If I, I, I should always know that there are Nitro boxes there. I'll be sure to remember that next time when I, when I do the time trial for Boneyard. They asked me got the crystal and the box gem as well. As I said, we'll come back and get the other clear gem when we got the red gem from another level. Again, we're not going to do the, the dance yet. That'll happen after we uh, go and face Tiny, so make them waves. Now, let's see how bad the controls really are in this, because I know a lot of people were mentioning that making waves or the jet ski levels in this game were pretty bad in terms of its controls. Let's see how bad it is. Let's see what the fuss is all about. Complete the course down the Power Crystal course. Oh, no. Right, let's see. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, so R2 is to accelerate. Wait, I can still press X on this. Oh, wait a minute. Hang on. Sorry, guys. Just had to stop for a bit because I didn't want my computer going uh, blank there when recording. Because, as I said, I don't want the risk of that happening in case my commentary gets lost or anything. Oh, god damn it. Right. Well, I can see why people say that this is sort of uh, tricky to control. Now, let's use the X button. Uh, let's use the X button, actually, instead of using R2, because that's what the game's suggesting to use. I'm not going to listen to the suggestions. I'm going to use the original controls. Oh, damn. Ah! Ah! God damn you. <laughs> yeah, I may have read your board, dude, but... That doesn't give you the right to w what and whack me down underwater like that. Come on. <laughs> okay, oh damn it. Yeah, okay. I can see why people say now that the controls are pretty bad in this. Like, yeah, the controls in, in the original were much better than this. Must be honest here. Uh, that is a criticism I'm throwing at uh, the developers here. The controls are com a bit garbage, if you ask me. Yeah, I, I know that that's not good. Okay, let's just be careful here, let's line that up properly. Sorry guys, I may take a while at this to get used to the controls here. Or maybe it's smart me just not getting used to the controls. Yeah, right, here we go. But, I'm impressed with the music. I really like hearing the music here. No, don't run into him again. Oh, damn it, really? Come on. I ran right into him again for a second time. I like wrecking this pirate's bone, don't I? I seriously do. I think that pirate was trying to abandon ship. I think that's what he was doing, wasn't it? He's like, he's so scared of the fight going on. He's like, hey, stop being a coward and get back in your ship and fight. That's that's what that's what I am. I, I was probably thinking. That's what I was probably thinking right there. Stop being a coward and get back and fight, you cowardly pirate. <laughs> All right, there we go. Okay, so far right. Please do not hit this guy again for the third time. Right, thank you. Hey, let's get the checkpoint. Get the checkpoint. Get the check. Come on. Get the checkpoint. Thank you. Right. Good God, yeah, this is really awkward to control this. I can see the time trials being an absolute nightmare for this level because of the controls in this. Oh, damn. Oh, what the hell? How did I get... Wait. What just happened? Did I just... Okay, right, that's a major glitch I've got to ask about. I had that guy's bow right. I should have died, but I got a life from it. How? How did that happen? That was that was wow. Okay, a cowardly pirate gives you a life. I think I might call it that. That actually major glitch. I'll take it anyway. That's an extra life, so I'm not going to complain. <laughs> Still though, I mean that that was kind of oh okay right. That was close. Nearly had a bomb before the checkpoint. That was pretty close. Oh god damn right, okay, that was... Will that happen again? Actually, no, I'm not even going to try and experiment with that. I'm not even going to try it. I'm nearly done with this level anyway. I mean, this is the easiest level, even though, to me, this is not easy at all in terms of controlling this. Oh no, right, okay, right, no. I was not about to experiment there again, guys, trust me. I wasn't. I wasn't trying to get a free life off that pirate. No. Oh. Oh, what? Okay. Wait, how did the life box just get thrown out there? Wait, does he... Wait, okay, right, so how... Okay, I am utterly confused right now. I am so confused right now. Does this pirate actually give you free lives? Okay, I'm guessing the pirates must have thought, okay, right, you lost your lives, here's the two of them back. Oh, thank you, pirates, I appreciate it. <laughs> 
Oh, well, that, that was actually unexpected, but very generous of them to do that. Alright, so that's all five levels completed and, and the first warp room of the tank twister. I don't know if any... I, I, let, let me know in the comments, guys, if you've seen that glitch before, because I want to know if, if you've seen that before. If any of those uh, pirates on the boats have given you a, an extra life or not. I'm, I'm actually very intrigued to see if you have actually uh, uh, earned those extra lives from those pirates. So anyway, guys, it's time to face Tiny in the Colosseum in Rome. Oh, you will try indeed, Tiny. You will try indeed. Sometimes he attacks too aggressively. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. You see, my voice isn't fully recovered. Oh, and there's a Cortex, a... Uh, it's a... Uh, Julius Caesar, I think. I'm not sure if I'm a Roman history, but I think that's him as Julius Caesar. He's the Roman Emperor. He's the Emperor here in this Colosseum, and there's this uh, Gladiator, or Tiny. Okay, right now, we're not skipping that. Okay, Tiny, come on down here and get it. He's gonna try and bounce all around. Alright. And then spin attack him. Now here come the lions. Release the lions! Okay, here they come. Oh, damn, look okay. out. Those lions look pretty adorable if you ask me. They don't look very harmless to me. The li uh, if you ask me, the lions in the PS1 version looked a lot more threatening because of their teeth, I think. I mean, if you ask me, the lions could have really shown their teeth in this, rather than, like, you know, just be all adorable. Because they are supposed to be a threat, right? This is the Roman Empire. The Roman era. Okay, there we go. Spin attack, spin attack, spin attack. Oh, okay, good. Now, I don't know if that glitch still works. I know that in the PS1 version of this, you can stand in the top left corner and do a glitch. Where you can, uh, where the lions will not harm you. Okay, there we go. That's it. Tiny is done. Alright, let's pick up the special power, and it is the supercharged body slam. So for more powerful biofall, press X button to jump, and then press circle at the top of the jump. <laughs> Cortex, what kind of face are you making? Let's test out on Tiny now, actually. Okay, I can still jump on them, that's interesting. Let's just jump on them right into the, the time twister machine. Right, there we go. That's it. Okay then, right, so... Now, we got another trophy for that as well. A trophy to pop up saying Tiny Trounced, I think that's what it was called. So, uh, the, the trophy was basically saying Defeat Tiny in the Gladiator Arena, I think. I think that's what the trophy was all about. Well done, children. By defeating Tiny, you have unlocked the gate to the next time travel area. Go back to the center of this time twister and save your progress if you wish. From there, you will see that the gate to the second time travel area is now open. Well, thank you, Aku, for that hint. But anyway, right, so that's Tiny done and dusted. Right, so guys, I'm going to end this off right here. So this is part 42 of my Let's Play of Crash Bandicoot the Insane Trilogy. And uh, whatever further doing, just going to just save over this. Oh, we've all got empty slots. Right, okay, so let's save the here. Alright, so 11%. Right, okay, so that's that done. So... I'm not going to enable an autosave slot, because that's not happening. I don't want to autosave on this way. So anyway, guys, next time I come back, I shall be starting off Warp Room 2, and I shall be getting all the crystals and gems that I can from here. So until then, guys, this is Clinic Gamer here. I uh, hope you all enjoyed uh, Part 42 of my Let's Play Crash Bandicoot Days and Trilogy. And uh, please feel free to like if you enjoyed, comment down below for your thoughts, and also please feel free to hit that subscribe button if you want more upcoming videos of the Insane Trilogy as well, in including Crash Bandicoot Warped. And yeah, Crash is getting so bored already, he's playing with yo-yo. I don't blame him, but anyway, <laughs> uh, thank you very much for watching, guys, and uh, have a good rest of the day. Goodbye.